Hello. Hello, everyone. It's the missionary again. <laughs> Remember me? <laughs> Back with more of campaign around the world. How are you all on this Sunday evening? I'm sure many people are watching uh, tennis. Go, Serena. <laughs> the Australian Open, also football. There's a lot going on. Hello, Mr. Queen. <laughs> Mr. Sonny, thank you for tuning in. How are you? It's campaign around the world. Hey, Miss Bradley, how you doing? Thank you for tuning in. This is the missionary. I'm still coming in, campaign around the world. And uh, tonight I will be talking about faith. Is it trust or is it faith? <laughs> and so, hey, Mr. Hurst, thank you for tuning in. Uh, thank you all so much. I know it's so much going on. On the weekends, uh, definitely, you know, sports-wise, there's a lot of exciting things happening. And uh, hello, Mr. Alexander. Thank you for tuning in. I definitely uh, love sports. <laughs> Trust me, there, my TV's on there. <laughs> I'm just in here, and definitely I want to continue what I started. It is uh, coming in, sharing, sharing the Word of God, sharing uh, as much as I can in these days before... The countdown to the 30th. Yes, God is in control. And you'll thank you, Jesus. Yes, sir. God is in control. Is it faith or is it trust? And so I wanted to come and talk about that a little bit. You know, a lot of the things that I'm sharing on my page recently, really for campaign around the world, is really all about faith. You know, it really is. I mean, it's all about faith. And, and so, you know, I wanted to talk a little bit more about that. Uh, you know, I think a lot personally, I just, I just think faith is a lot, <laughs> got lost somewhere in religion and tradition. And, um, you know, if you don't have faith, you don't have anything. If you don't have faith in an unseen God and his ability to, to, uh, do what it is he said he can do, uh, you know, it's really no point to having a spirituality. It's not, it's not about getting in lines to find out how many, uh, how much, uh, you know, you can get in, in the way of a prophecy or, uh, get in the way of being blessed and, uh, what people call like monetary tangible blessings. God is so much greater than that. He's so much bigger than that. Some people's lives is so torn up. They need something money cannot buy peace. You cannot buy peace with no money. Okay. You cannot buy joy with no money. You can buy some temporary happiness. But anything that God gives you is long lived. It's not short lived. And many times when we get things and, and we think we try to put our faith in that. And when it gets old or it breaks down or it lets us down. Hey, how you doing? Thank you for tuning in, Miss Amy. Uh, you know, definitely, you know, it is a big difference. Is it faith or is it trust? And so for me, you know, faith is, you know, Hebrews. I can read that again. And everybody knows it's the it. Uh, let me go here and make sure I read it correctly because I'm not, you know, I, rem I remember where stuff is, some things, but I'm not, I'm not that girl that memorized all the scriptures. No, I do not. I basically, I know what they are. I've lived them. <laughs> How about living them and you read them, but some people ain't doing none of it. Okay. So Hebrew 11 and one. <clears throat> now faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen. And so I kind of wanted to try to incorporate my story into what I'm talking about tonight as we're still doing campaign around the world. And so to me, when we talk about faith, we're talking about baby steps. OK, faith is small steps, but trust is when you got the whole package, the total, the whole total package. You know, so many people, you know, they may have they may put faith on a certain subject or for a certain thing and. You know, it was short lived because it didn't turn out how they expected. And so, you know, faith doesn't come and go. You either have it or you don't. <laughs> and so I wanted to talk a little bit about it. I actually had did a, 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 a Rick Warren. Oh, my God. If you guys get a chance, go on YouTube and look up his teaching on faith. It is absolutely awesome. And, you know, the way he broke it down, you know, definitely I have uh, going to use uh, some of the things that he discussed because it's so relevant. It's so truthful and it will kind of get you in an idea of when we talk about faith and trust, like kind of what it is. So I'm going to give you another scripture. This is uh, Jeremiah 17 and 7. 
and it says, Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord and whose hope is in the Lord. Amen. So many people, they say they have faith, but faith is baby steps. I'm telling you, you can put your, you can't, you, God is so huge and his mind is, does not operate like our mind does. And many times what we call faith is we believe something and then when it doesn't happen, then we don't believe it anymore. We, that, that's not faith. Faith does not come and go. It's not. It can be transient in the life of a believer as you grow and mature. But once you have been doing it for a while, it develops into full-blown trust, which means whether I pray for something or whether I stand in faith for something or believe something, if it comes to pass or not, I still trust God because ultimately he is the one orchestrating it all. Okay, And when you put your faith in him, you, you, you put your trust in him, you know, with the small steps of faith that you do according to the words, you, you do what it says to do. You know, you love your neighbor. You, you, you remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Just, you know, certain things that the word has described or shared with you, uh, patterns to frame your life after. But once you get through doing those things, there is someone that is given a, that you give an account to. There's someone that's overseeing and orchestrating this whole behind the scenes uh, a, a scenario in each one of our lives. And it is the great I am, you know. And for me, I think once I started in a relationship with God, I began to read his word and I began to look at a lot of preaching and teaching and praying, praying in the Holy Spirit, praying in the Holy Ghost. You know, it, it really built up my inner man. It really built up, you know, uh, something in me. And so before I left to go on my trip, to Europe, ultimately, I had to have trust in God. I mean, I didn't know that's what it was. Uh, so as I was sharing, I don't know if you guys remember, I, I mentioned this. Um, this is when I went out of the country. This total travel. Mr. Brown, thank you for tuning in. And I invested, what is this, 400, what is that, 400 and something dollars. That's how much it cost me to go <laughs> a one-way ticket to Brussels. Amen. So once I got there, trust me, the exchange rate in another country for our paper U.S. dollars, you probably get a half or a third <laughs> of your actual U.S. dollar amount. Because remember, when you're in Europe, they got Euro dollars back then. I think they had the Belgian franc. And when you go to different countries, French francs, uh, they have they have different money or they had different money each country that I went to. So you may have some money in Belgium, but when you go to France or when you go to the German Germany, that money, you got to go through the exchange. And so you get it, whatever that rate is for that day, you know, depending on what the stock market says it's going to be. And, you know, uh, actually, when I went to Europe, when I say I did, I didn't have any money, I had some money. But once I went through the turnstile <laughs> and, uh, <clears throat> Excuse me, once I went through the turnstile and went through the exchange booth, man, I thought I had some money. When I got through, I think all I had was enough for three days lodging. That was it. <laughs> I mean, I thought I really had some money. I mean, I probably had like $800, but, you know, I didn't know how long I was going to be there. God didn't give me any details like that. He just told me to go. He just said, get up and go. And that's what I did. And, uh, you know, I, I has, I thought I had some money, but to me, once I got to the country, man, U.S. dollars, yeah, I might as well burnt it up because it wasn't, it wasn't really worth much in another country. U.S. dollars, they, they, you may get a third, maybe half, maybe, depending on where you are, but uh, the, the, you can't spend U.S. dollars in another country. I mean, you can, but, you know, the way you do it is you got to transfer their money. That's just like... If somebody from France come over here and give us a French franc, I mean, what I'm gonna do with that? I can't, I can't use it in my everyday going and doing. I have to go and exchange it in at, ex, at, an, at an international exchange place or a money exchange. But there's places exchange money because I, I did it going out of the country and coming back in. So, uh, you know, definitely, you know, it, it's called faith. You know, when I got to Europe, you know, I guess God wanted to show me you're gonna, not gonna put your trust in this money that's in your pocket. You're not. Because you're going to have to trust me. You're going to have to trust me. You know, it, it was a leap of faith to go. But to maintain the whole 
time that I was there, it, it, it took trust. I had to trust that God was who he said he was. He was going to do what he says he was going to do. He told me I would not be, before I left, I said, Lord, I'm not going, I can't be hungry and I can't be without a place to stay. And he said it would not come nigh you. And he kept his part of the bargain. I was never hungry. I was never without a place to live. He covered those bases, but I had limited control over everything else. I mean, other than, you know, me going around and doing things in the city and, you know, people coming and taking me places. And, you know, I was going, uh, doing Bible studies in the daytime and uh, doing um, on the weekend, I was speaking to women and, you know, everywhere I went, it was just a different day for another dose of faith. And, you know, it took every day for me to have to use that to get through the day, you know. Many of us just want to use our faith one time for one big thing and we think that's going to be it, but it doesn't work like that. You know, when you're a Christian or a spiritual person, it takes a lifetime to develop the type of trust in God that he's looking for. And, you know, faith, like I said, people have faith and they'll pray and things don't turn out the way they expect it. They get upset. You know, we all do that. <laughs> we get upset, but that does not mean that God is not who he says he is. It doesn't mean that his love is not real. It doesn't mean that his plan for your life is 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 extinct or that it is not going to happen. There's just times when faith is baby steps and trust is the whole total package. So I was reading Jeremiah 17 and 7. It says you're blessed if you put your trust in the Lord. You're blessed if your hope is in the Lord because ultimately what you're looking for and the end results, you want it to be something that's in your best interest. And that's what God is about. God is about our best interest. Now, how we get there, he, he ain't going to tell you that. <laughs> it takes faith to get there. And I just really feel like faith is a really a lost uh, trust in God. It's just really been lost in a lot of the things that they call Christianity and church. And I just don't get it. I don't. I'm not understanding. I, I, they just remove God, believing in God, trusting God. When they say that, people are saying, okay, I want this specific thing or I want this specific. Um, I would just give an example. I, I want this business or I want this car or I want this man or I, I'm ready to get married or I want a husband or I want a wife or I want a new job. And so to people, you know, that are not really deep in the things of God, you know, when they get it, they assume that's, yeah, you know, and that's exciting until you have to go to work and you have to put up with that man and you have to, you know, wash the car and you got to, you know, take care of the baby, you know, and, 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 you know, the promotion is they want you to work overtime and over hours and on the weekends and extra days. And so now all of a sudden what you thought that you wanted in faith, it can become a burden. Because there are times when God does hear and answer prayers and he gives you what you ask for. Now, once you get it, it might not be what you thought it was and it ain't going to be what you wanted. <laughs> so everything that we ask God for, he doesn't give us. Sometimes it's not in our best interest. And sometimes it's just not on the page of where he is taking us um, long term. Amen. And so, again, I wanted to talk about faith and trust. It's two different things. Faith is baby steps. And trust is when you have the whole total package that you trust in God. And as I shared on campaign around the world, God sent me around the world 90 days, you know, I had to trust God. I had to trust him. That's a long time to be in a country where you cannot talk and you have to depend on the spirit of God and people's hearts that he touched to uh, be what you need to survive, you know, in this foreign land, you know, and uh, ultimately him uh, uh, directing me to go to Europe, it really was an opportunity for me to learn more about his character, more about how he operates, more about what he does, how he does it. And ultimately, you know, I was taken care of, you know what I'm saying? It, it didn't go the way I expected. You know, when I got there, I kept saying, you know, I had uh, left uh, my my job at Procter & Gamble. And uh, at some point they were like, oh, we owe you some money. And so I held on to them telling me that, week after week after month after month, but I never got it. And, you know, God fixed it. So I guess I didn't need it because I survived. I survived to do what I needed to do. There was one point when I was like, Lord, you know, I was, I was sharing, uh, you know, how the lady I stayed with, she just, her, her diet was totally different. And I was like, Lord, I want to be able to have some different types of food, you know? And, uh, I think God, I told God, I can't get a job. I can't, 
read the language. I can't talk. I mean, what am I going to do? So ultimately something happened and God created an opportunity for me to get a job. I mean, you know, I was working. I was actually serving someone, you know, in the capacity of just doing, um, you know, home care and sitting with an older man. And it was such a blessing. And so, you know, I, I don't want to get too far into that, but I'm just saying, you know, there were times when, you know, there were things that I needed, you know, and God made it available to me, you know, through, you know, giving me uh, 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 employment, you know, while I was there and giving me an opportunity. Hello, how Mr. Is it Lange? I can't pronounce it exactly, but thank you for tuning in. This is the missionary campaign around the world. I'm still talking about, is it trust? Is it faith or is it trust? And so now I want to go into a little more what I was going to say. Okay, so trust is a total package and it's not knowing. Okay, so when you, when you, if you ever go over and you find Rick Warren teaching on faith is just so dynamic. And I wanted to use some of the things that he talked about. So when you have faith, you, uh, faith is you don't know what, you don't know how, <laughs> you don't know when. You don't know where and you don't know how long. And so those are questions that are going to come into play as you develop trust in God. Faith, again, is just baby steps. I got faith in this, a faith over here, faith over there. But trust means whether the steps of faith that you thought was going to go the way that they were going to go, the way you wanted when it doesn't do that, then that's when trust kicks in. Trust kicks in to say, hey, Lord, you know what? Uh, it didn't turn out the way that I expected, but I'm going to trust you. You know, whatever those details are that I can't see, whatever's around the corner that I can't perceive, whatever is going on that I'm not able to tap into, you know, whatever those things are, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to have to trust you, you know, to fill up the gap or make up the difference or come in with the, the details, you know, because many times God don't give us the details. He just tell us what to do. And uh, from time to time, we can get some encouragement along the way. And many times he does not give us the whole picture. He gives us things in snapshots. And so those are baby steps of faith. And so trust comes when you have continually put time, effort, energy, and focus on in something. And eventually you relax in the process, whether things go the way that you want or not. You know, after a while you like, God, you know, Lord, you know, you know what you want to do. You know how you want this to go. You, you have it already planned, pre-planned out. See, Many times we don't understand the Lord is not trying to come up with something. He's not trying to come up with an idea. He's not trying to figure out how to get you through this difficult season. He's not trying to come up with a plan B, you know. <laughs> he doesn't he doesn't have all that. He already knows. It's already written. It's already done. And so many things because we are human, we live in time. He lives in eternity. And so you know, he can see the end from the beginning. He is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. And the word says he that's begun a good work in you is able to complete it to the day of Jesus Christ. So once you give your life to Christ and you continue to work on your relationship with him, it's never over. Amen. It just goes from faith to faith, glory to glory, level to level. And that's how we begin to um, take our baby steps of faith. And then it turns into trust. So again, faith are steps when... You don't know what that means the task. You know, what what is he going to have me do? What 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 am I supposed to do when faith is something that God has brought to you to do? You want to know what the task is. Amen. So that's first you want to know what. Amen. Then you want to know how it's going to get done. Amen. You want to know how it's going to get done. Then you want to know when. <laughs> Amen. You want to know when. When is it going to happen? When is it going to be? And then where? Is like, you know, is it a location? Is it an opportunity? Is it, you know, and then you want to know how long. How long is it going to take for all of these pieces and parts to line up to make a whole story? So in the story, you got to know the what, the how, the when, the where. You ain't necessarily got to know how long, but you need to know the what, the when, the where, and the how. And so faith are those steps. And once you get to the how long, you should be trusting them by then. Because you don't know how long. I'm telling you, it's been 21 years since I went out of the country. 21 years. That's old enough for somebody to been born and driving. Been born and able to go to the clubs. I'm just saying. 21 years, that's a long time. You know what I'm saying? But it's a lifetime. But it has taken a long time to build trust 
in the Lord because I have had to use my steps of faith. I've had to, you know, not understand what, not understand how, not understand the why, the when, the where, or the how long. And so that's when you develop and begin to grow in maturity to where you are able to walk with God and then you're able to just depend on him and, you know, your prayer life and, you know, uh, the word and, and understand that, you know, he has a good plan for us. It may not be the plan that you expect. It may not be the plan that you diagrammed. It may not be the plan that you mapped out. It may not be the plan on your, 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 uh, time schedule. It may not transpire the way you expect it. It may not have the people involved that you thought. It may go longer than you thought. It may not be in some place convenient. And so all of those things are steps of faith that's going to lead you to the trust that you want to have in God. As Jeremiah 17 and 7 says, blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord and whose hope is in the Lord. Amen. We got to put our trust in him, our hope in him. And I'm on Jeremiah 1 and 19. That says, let me get that together. You know, it's just really a it's, it's just a lost art. A lot of people, you know, they trust, they 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 have faith, or they say they do. And you know, God is a good God. Sometimes He allows us to. He doesn't say no to everything. You know, if it's not going to affect your destiny necessarily, or He may allow you to go through it on uh, something that you choose or you pick. You know, until you figure out that this ain't what's going to make you happy. And uh, you know, God sometimes He'll let us run around in our own. Thing that we've created until we figure out we're just running around in it and we're not running it. And so until you seek out the uh, the uh, the most high, the 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 great counsel, the wonderful counselor, <laughs> until you look him up and really ask him, you can just be running around in a circle for a long time. It says if you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. So you got to be willing, you got to be willing to walk with God, not knowing how, what, when, where, or how long. <laughs> and being obedient means to do whatever he asks you to do or is requesting you to do, no matter what it is, no matter how it's going to get done, no matter when it's going to get done, no matter where it's going to get done, and no matter how long it's going to take. So that that's some sum for you. It takes a minute to digest that. I'm saying when you go from faith to trust, it has to be some rocky parts in between because you're going to have to believe that, uh, believe God. Ultimately, when you get into things he may uh, instruct you to do and you don't know details about it. You just really following God just one step at a time. And so following the Lord around the world and really promoting this campaign around the world. That's really what happened is I didn't have the big long short of it, you know. But see, when you put your trust in God, you know, just know how they had them exercise where you fall back and somebody catch you and you just know they're going to catch you and not going to let you fall. After so long, you give up the need to control. You give up the need to manipulate things. You give up the need to having to know how. You give up the need to having to know when. You give up the need to have to know what. you just available for the master's use. Amen. And whatever it is that he wants and has planned for you, you ready to, you ready to walk that out. And so for me, I think God gave me an opportunity to develop a relationship with him, starting out with baby steps of faith. And eventually it morphed into trust. And trust meant you don't know how, you don't know what, when, where, or how long. And for me to be able to, you know, do this trip around the world, I had to trust God because I didn't know any of that. I didn't know what, I didn't know how, I didn't know when, I didn't know where, and I didn't know how long. And so faith will give rise to trust if you take the baby steps of faith because it's going to be necessary because those are building blocks as you go along that's going to get you to the level where you're stable to when God is ready to bestow upon you or do what he is he wants to do in your life, you are already ready. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of people... They want to get in faith and get out. It's like double dutch to them. They like, hey, you know, they, you know, you're gonna get in or not. You know, some people have trusted God and things didn't turn out. They said they did. They said they put their faith in God, 
and things didn't turn out the way they wanted, so they don't even pray anymore. They don't even ask God anything anymore. Some people are angry with God. Some people are mad at God. Some people are disgusted with God because things did not go the way they expected or the way that they planned. And so trust is a big thing. It's for mature people. Faith is where you start with baby steps. Baby steps of faith is you don't know what the task is going to be. You don't know what you're going to have to do. You don't know how it's going to get done. You don't know when he going to call you or when you're going to be called on. You don't know where it's going to happen and you don't know how long it's going to last. How long you going to have to wait? You know, and so trust is what you have when you don't ask questions anymore about the what you just do it. You're not worried about how you're not worried about when, where or how long that is trust. And many people fall off the process before it gets to that because it's hard. I'm not going to tell nobody walking by faith is easy. No, it is not. We live in a natural world. We're natural people and we like to feel, taste, touch, smell and experience that is what we have in this natural body. But once you begin to tap into things of God and your spirit man is built up by your praying, by your praying in the Holy Ghost, you know, spending time with God, reading the word, you know, getting preaching and teaching. It builds up your faith to where when I say had his test where you fall back and somebody catch you, you know, ultimately, that's what God wants you to do. He wants you to let go and let God and just hope you we be hoping he going to catch us. But see, when we know the love of God is for us, that we know that he is going to catch us. Now, you may go through a season where it doesn't look like you're winning. You may go through a season where it looks like everything is a loss. But if you're doing it under the guise of steps of faith, what God is telling you to do, you know, ultimately, trusting him is going to bring you into his best because you have to believe he has your ultimate best interest at heart. Why would Jesus die to then browbeat us over and over again? That, that makes no sense. He died so we can have access, so we can come into the knowing of what the Bible is about. This person of the Bible, these people, this, this, this Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, that is the purpose of reading the Bible. A lot of people read the Bible just to know the scriptures and say, I can remember them and quote them better than you. But does that mean that you know God? Does that mean... That you have faith. No. Faith is action. Faith is putting the words you know into action. And many people have a problem doing that. If it's not something they don't want to do. Or something they want to do. Or something they don't want to do. It says in Isaiah 1 and 19. If you are willing and obedient. You shall eat the good of the land. It didn't say you will. That means it's conditional. It's not an exact science. Just like faith is not. Faith in God, yes, but the steps, the, the the what, how, when, where, and how long, that's up for grabs. You don't know. That's, that you don't know. You have no idea. That That's when trust comes in. Trust comes when you don't have to know why. You don't have to know what. You don't have to know how. You don't have to know when or how long. And so many people fall out of the process before that because it's not for babies. No, it is not. And it is not. It's hard. I'm not going to lie. You know, faith is this abstract concept. And I think a lot of people been running from it. That's why the church is this. I'm not understanding what are they doing in these churches? Like, I'll be going church to church to church. I ain't going to lie. I'll be out here doing market research. And I'm just trying to figure out, like, you know, is faith is just a lot. It's then got lost, you know. And, and I, I hate the faith just to be with some old people because you're going to need it as young people or even us in the middle of that. Between old and young, we're going to need that to make it to the old age, to make it to the end. Many people don't practice their faith. You have to practice it. That means when God tells you to do something, he says, if you are willing and obedient, well, if you, you got to sign up, <laughs> if you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. He's told you that there is blessings. Hello, Mr. Jameson. Hey, Miss Jones. I'm sorry, babe. Thank you for tuning in. I'm talking about is it faith or is it trust? And so many people, yes, they start out small steps of faith. But ultimately, we understand faith is not about twisting God's arm to do what you want him to do. You know, when you talk to God and you put prayers before him or you stand in faith for something, you got to trust that if he doesn't do it,
He either has something better for you. That was not, you should be aiming too low, you know, and, you know, he may have another open door for you somewhere. I've, I've noticed that about myself. Sometimes I may want to connect with people or connect with a certain group or a certain person. And God showed me, it's like I'm big trying to bend down and get into a dollhouse. house. Okay. It's too little. It's too low. Sometimes it's too low. What are you trying to connect with and who you're trying to hook up with? They don't have the anointing that you have. They don't have the faith. Mr. Gerard, right. thank you for tuning in. This is the missionary. I'm still on campaign around the world. I'm talking about faith. Is it faith or is it trust? Many people have steps of faith, but until you trust God completely with the what, you ain't got to know what, you ain't got to know how, when, where, or how long. Until you get all of those five bullet points, you do not have trust in God yet. You got to trust him. Trust him means step by step, event by event, moment by moment. You got to trust him. And so I'm just saying when I was in Europe, I left. My ticket was 400 and something dollars. I went around the world on a one-way ticket. And ain't no telling how much it would cost now for me to travel from Brussels, Belgium, to France, back to Brussels, to Germany, back to Brussels, to Holland, back to Brussels, to Canada, and from Canada to Boston, and Boston to the to to me back in the Midwest, and to room and boy and eating every day all of that time. I left in February. I didn't come back home until August. I was in a couple of continents and a couple of cities, and God was bouncing me around, and I didn't know anyone anywhere. <clears throat> I had to. Use my faith and my trust in God to get me through these days when I didn't have one, some, nobody to lean on. I didn't have a human being that I could really explain how I felt. I did feel like I was like dangling like this, like my feet never would touch the ground. I felt like a God, when am I going to sit me down? When am I going to get comfortable? When am I? But faith is not about that. Faith is about standing up in the air. And that's what people don't like that feeling. The feeling of being out of control. The feeling of being like a puppet. Not necessarily. You got a mind of your own. But I'm saying like to submit to what God wants to do over what your own personal flesh and will wants to do. It's a struggle. And it takes faith to do that. That's a step of faith. Amen. You got to take a step of faith to put your will on the back burner. And then nevertheless, not my will. Not mine. But yours be done. You know, Lord. And so many people, they didn't escape all of that. They didn't ran around that. And many people want to have a, 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 a victory in their lives, but they don't. They don't. Because if you don't have trust in God, you're not going to have it because you're always going to be understanding there's something to the unknown. There there will always be things that you don't know. There's always be things that you don't know. But the word that told you, God is his secret is with those that love him and that seek after him. And if there's things you want to know, God will tell you. God will. He'll reveal them to you when he's ready in his own time. But until then, you got to be comfortable not knowing what, when, where, how, or how long. That's how trust in God is going to be cultivated. There's no other way to get it. There's no laying on of hands to get it. There's no getting it by osmosis, touching your friend. That's, that's not going to get it. You're not going to get no faith and trust by Bishop Jake's laying hands on you. That's not going to get it. You're not going to get it by standing in the prayer line. You're not going to get it by going to somebody's conference. You're not going to get it by getting prophesied over, getting a word from the prophet. That's, that's not going to get it. You got to put your faith and trust in God. And it, it says, if you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. You know, if you're willing, you got to be willing. You got to be willing to give up what you thought, what you wanted, what you think, what you believe. And trade all of that in for what the word of God says and go to this. You don't know what, you don't know how, you don't know when, where, or how long. And those are the requirements for you to get to the trust stage to where you have maturity in your faith. Faith is not for babies. It's not for babies. Everybody has to start somewhere. But when you trust God, that means you done been through the ringer. God is not going to hit you. You're going to go through the jungle gym. Of faith. There's no way around it. If you want to grow into a seasoned, mature believer, 
able to handle the, the weight of glory that God wants to bestow upon his people. He don't want everybody lackluster. He don't want everybody limping through the race and using people that's scared and, and, and can't tell the truth and afraid to hurt people's feelings and afraid to speak the truth of God's word. You, you got to get past that. You, you, you know, some people, you may go, you're not going to be popular with everybody when you use your faith and when you have trust in God, because a lot of people do not. They don't. They trust in what they can do. They trust in what other people can do for them. But see, the word tells me the king's heart is in his hand. He turned it whichever way he will. That means that even though you might run across a person that told you they don't like you, and they, they ain't interested in you, and I can't help you, but God will make that same person turn around and be the one to give you a hand and lift you over the wall or lift you up to the next level. Because God said the king's heart is in his hand. He, he turns it how he wants to. And so that is another area. Just faith. Faith, is it faith or is it trust? Trust is something that you have garnered and gathered over a period of time. It's like, man, you done been through the jungle gym of faith. Amen. Faith is baby steps. Trust is the total package. And that is where we want to get to. And I believe that my trip around the world, it really taught me about steps of faith initially. But before I left from Brussels, before I left from my assignment, I had to trust God. Because there was no way that I could be in places where I didn't know anyone. I didn't have, if, like I explained, the money. Man, it, it, it was ridiculous. But, you know, I all my needs were provided. Hey, Mr. Ruben, how you doing? Thank you for tuning in. Is this the missionary I'm talking about? Is it faith or is it trusting? Many people don't understand. You know, faith is a lost art. People don't even talk about it. I, have, I very rarely hear people even say the word faith. I very, I very rarely hear people even talk about it. Faith is what this whole book, this Bible, is based on. Faith is in an unseen God. Many people, they believe God for their salvation. I'm saved. I'm saved. But they don't believe nothing else. They believe they're going to go to heaven after they receive, you know, Christ and, you know, it's, it's salvation. But what goes on from the day you... Give your life to God to the day you die. Many people never develop faith or trust in God in between there. You have to. You have to do it every day for all of the things that you need. You got to trust God. You got to trust him. And like I say, steps, faith is the steps, and trust is the top tier. Amen. That's what we're working to get toward. That means when you get to the point where you don't care what the task is God may want you to do. You don't care how it's going to get done. You don't care when it's going to get done. You don't care where and you don't care how long. That is how you are going to develop the, the trust in God that he is speaking about in Isaiah, no, Jeremiah 17 and 7, where it says, blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord and whose hope is in the Lord. So many of us are disappointed because we be putting our hope in something other than God. Some of us be disappointed for a lifetime, wounded, Hurt on the side of the road like roadkill. Our spiritual life be on life support because something we wanted didn't go like we wanted or something we believed didn't go like we planned. And so, you know, ultimately, some of us have just traded in our, our, our walk and just, you know, fall off in the process. But I, under, I understand how you can do it. I do. I understand. Like I said, I've been 21 years since I went to Europe on a one-way ticket. $420, but it took faith, you know, each step, every day, every everything I had to do. It built up to where before I left Europe, I trusted God. I trusted him because I didn't, I trusted him before I left. I thought I did, but it was really steps of faith. I took a big leap of faith. And so every day he showed me that he can be trusted because I, I was provided for, I was taken care of, whatever I needed. It was right there. I was never a lonely i was never um without you know companionship if that's what i wanted it was always people around i could call on i had young women that befriended me uh, one young lady was from portugal another young lady was from burundi they were friends of mine and they were around my age the young the um you know we used to hang out and so we all you know understood that we were all growing in the things of god and so again as i shared you know campaign around the world you know, the missionary talking about, you know, trust 
uh, is it faith or is it trust, you know? And how, you know, for an investment of uh, 420 and some, 400 and some change, you know, that's with taxes on the ticket. That was a one-way ticket to Brussels. And that's that's it. That's all I had. And when I got there, I thought I really had some money. But when they got through with the exchange rate, and I had enough for three days lodging. That was it. And I kept thinking I was going to get money from my job that I had left in the States. And it never came. And, you know, but I, God brought me back safely. <laughs> he brought me back safely. And actually, when I went to Canada, my my ticket was so expensive. But ultimately, God gave me sponsors. He gave me people everywhere I needed to be. Mr. Mike, thank you for tuning in. This is the missionary. I was talking about is it trust, is it faith, or is it trust? And many people, they use the steps of faith. But if you fall off, you're never going to get to where you trust God completely. And so faith, the steps of faith is you don't know what, you don't know how, you don't know when, you don't know where. And you don't know how long. And when you don't care about those things, God can trust you. You can trust God. And it says, blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord and whose hope is in the Lord. So if you want to be blessed, what you got to do? You got to put your trust in God. So is it faith or is it trust? And definitely, I want to walk in trust. I want to fall back so God can catch me. I don't have to even be afraid because he ain't going to let me fall. So again, it's a campaign around the world. It's the missionary. And I ask you guys again, check out my stack, check out my page. So I'm still, you know, asking you guys to support <clears throat> the missionary taking her uh, story. All right, hey, Mr. Mike, God has, yes, he does. Yes, he does, Mr. Mike. You know, you showed and said a mouthful right there. God bless you. And so, you know, I help the missionary take her story around the world. This story of faith, this story of faith, I'm telling you. I didn't know how, I didn't know what, I didn't know when, where, or how long. And it has taken 21 years for me to hold on to that one experience where God took me around the world to hold my faith, to hold me like in a holding pattern. You know how the planes do, just keep circling the runway, circling in the airspace because it's not clear to land. That's how I had to do. That's how I've been doing for 20, 21 years. And I just thank and praise God for not allowing me to give up. For not allowing me to throw in the towel and just encouraging me every step of the way. You know, sometimes I would have those seasons of silence where I was talking to God or praying and he wasn't listening. It is, and I didn't say he wasn't listening. He wasn't speaking. You know, there's many seasons you will go through like that. You will get used to his voice and him comforting you in the very beginning. And as you get down the road of peace, he's not talking that much. It might be a year or two he ain't saying nothing. You just keep doing what you've been doing. And so, you know, those are steps of faith that ultimately are going to lead to that whole total package of trust to where you don't care what he said you to do. You don't care how. You don't care when, where, or how long it's going to take. And that's ultimately where you want to get in the trust category. And so it takes time. It takes concentrated effort. It takes willingness and obedience. It said if you're willing and obedient, you'll eat the good of the land. You shall eat the good of the land. So I want to eat the good of the land. So I wanted to be willing and I wanted to be obedient. So sometimes we do what God tells us to do, but we ain't willing. Sometimes we are obedient, but we're not willing. Sometimes we willing, but we don't do it. And God been told us what to do and we still skipping around and contemplating it and looking at it and mulling over it. And many times when God tells you to do something, you have the faith to do it when he tells you to do it. If you wait many times, the unction, the strength, the courage, it has passed. You will find that out. So delayed obedience sometimes is delayed blessings. So many of y'all quit crying. I'm telling you, faith is not for babies. It's not. This relationship with God is not for babies. Everybody got to start somewhere. But ultimately, once you get on the treadmill in the jungle gym of faith, you want to get to trust. You got to strengthen your muscles. And he's going to give you chance and opportunity to do that. And that's what he did with me. Man, I was hanging for some monkey boys. I'm telling you. <laughs> Foreign country. Didn't understand the language. Couldn't communicate with the people. I always had to have a translator. But many times I didn't. I had to navigate the country on my own. But the lady that I was with, you know, she was always very gracious. 
And, you know, God just took care of me. And I just put all my trust in him, you know, because it started with baby steps of faith. I didn't know the what was go to Europe. I didn't know how. I didn't know when. I didn't know where. And I didn't know how long. And, you know, God took me around the world. 90 days. And it's been 21 years. 21 years since I took that trip. And I've had to hold on and that, to that, that trust, to that one incident where he took me around the world. It has had to weather the storm for 21 years to hold on to that one incident. It has carried me 21 years because I've seen the awesome, supernatural power of God to take me, a single mother, from a Fortune 500 job, stable life. He said, get rid of y'all. Take your son to his father. Leave this job, get up, and follow me to a place where I will show you. And I didn't know where I was gonna go. I didn't know, I didn't know what, how, when, where, or how long. And so by the time I came back from the trip, I had trust in God. I'm telling you, it took everything out of me. It took everything out of me as, a, as you know, my my will. That's what it did. It killed my will. And I said, Lord, you know what? Nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. Amen. So I want to just come in real quick on a Sunday. I know everybody trying to get back to their football games and the tennis match because I'm hoping to see Serena soon. Go, Serena. I love tennis. And I know some of you all are looking at the 49ers and the Packers. I am a sports girl. <laughs> I'm a sports girl. And look, I think the Winter Olympics are on too. I'm going to start checking those out. So uh, I just want you guys to... Um, Make sure that you're working on your, your faith walk, you know, because it's going gonna, it's gonna to pay dividends. You know, don't don't listen to everyone that's telling you, you know, you ain't got to do this, you ain't got to do that. Yes, you do need to pray. Yes, you do need to read your word. Yes, you do need to confess scriptures. Yes, you do need to go to church. You need to align yourself with some type of Bible study, Bible group, Bible class, and get you some Jesus down in you because faith over the course of time, it's baby steps, but it's going to turn into ultimately into trust. And then God can entrust you with great and wonderful things. Amen. So you guys have a good evening. And remember to support the missionary taking her, her story around the world. Taking her story around the world. And so I was just sharing with you all for an investment of $400 and some change. A one-way ticket to Brussels. God took me around the world from Brussels to France. From Brussels to Germany, from Brussels to Holland, Brussels to Canada, and Canada to Boston. Boston back to the United States. All I invested was $400 and some change. And whatever I needed in between, God provided for me. Gave me sponsors. He gave me work. Whatever I needed to make it happen. And I wasn't stressed out. Why? Because I was trusting in him. So when you, he said, uh, it's called sweatless victory. That's the anointing too. <laughs> Sweat lit. That's why it's called 90 day anointing. You know, the spirit of God had to come upon me to do a special assignment. It was a special assignment. And so, you know, God says, you know, go, go and do what I have uh, commanded you to do. And that's what I did. And so I'm just asking you all to support the missionary. Take her story around the world. So you guys can um, cash out. Dollar sign C-A-L-I-H-O-U. Um, also, you can um, PayPal me. Sandra Kelly, S A N D R A C A L I, and or GoFundMe. So all of those links are on this stat. And uh, you guys have a great evening. And remember, you know, faith is baby steps. Trust is the total package. And when you start to trust God, you don't care what it is He wants you to do. You don't care how it's gonna happen. You don't care when, where, or how long it's gonna take. That's what mature people want to get to. You have a good evening.